basically the purpose of this event is to make our relationship fully charged. How many of you want your relationship to be charged, to be recharged by the Lord? Okay? So tonight, we're going to share our, of course, our relationship as husband and wife. How the Lord make our relationship strong and healthy. And until now, it's still alive and kicking. After, After 21 years of God's uh, grace and faithfulness. So, we would like to share and impart some some tips. I know you've been married for, maybe some of you have been married for 25 years. Some of you have been married for 30 years here now. <laughs> the longest one. 25. 24. 23. Oh, Brother uh, Ramon and Sister LB. 22. Brother Bob and Sister Rina. 22. Praise the Lord. We've been married for 21 years now. And we thank God for His faithfulness and goodness. It's only by the grace of God. So allow, allow, allow me to share with you how we keep our relationship recharged. So first, I'd like to share the first thing that we, we're going to share is about the, in the area of communication. You know, communication is so important, especially in husband and wife. I like to read a passage in uh, Hebrews says here in uh, Hebrews 13 to 16 says, "But to do good and to communicate, forget not; it is pleasing in the sight of God." We know how important to communicate with the Lord. It pleases Him when we communicate with the Lord, when we pour out our hearts, when we have some burdens, hurts, even our feelings. We try to communicate with the Lord. Amen. We try to pour out our hearts and say, "Lord, this is my problem. This is my situation." It pleases God. When we call upon His name, when we communicate with the Lord. In fact, the Bible says in Matthew eleven twenty eight, the Lord is encouraging us to communicate to Him. Come unto me, all of you who are heavy, heavy burden, and I will give you rest. Jeremiah 3, verse 3 says, call unto me, and I will answer you. In other words, it pleases Him when we communicate to God. Amen. When we pour out our hearts to the Lord. At the same, the same time, we please the Lord when we communicate to Him. Remember? The same thing with us couples. We need to communicate with one another. You know, we've been married for 21 years now. We always make it sure our communication is intact. We try to talk to her and pour out my heart. They have some problems. If I have some struggles, I make sure she knows my struggles. She knows my feelings. She knows what's happening to me. So, especially as a pastor, I always talk to my wife and tell my struggle, pour out my needs. And my wife, Linda, she's very much willing to listen. Can you share something about it? Yeah, especially during uh, our travel times. That's why I want to, I wa always want to come with him <clears throat> anywhere he goes. I always, I always want to tag along because that's the very... Uh, best time that we can talk together and discuss things, laugh together, and it's it keeps us uh, bonded to each other. So we really communicate. I was uh, telling him a while ago that you know even um, even before we do it. Oh, what should we do it? <laughs> <laughs> it's a secret. We, we talk and then we pray first. We, we would remind each other, okay, let's pray first before. You know, Morris is very spiritual, that's why. Because <laughs> <laughs> so he loves to pray. He said, okay, can we, can we pray together? Let's pray first. <laughs> let's communicate to God first. <laughs> before before true, we can communicate with one another. And it becomes more special. For me, it becomes more special. We, You know, I, I always believe that the more spiritual you are, the more spiritual you are, the more... Uh, to me intimate and more uh, expressive of your sexual relationship. desires. <laughs> <laughs> so guys, it's, it's a good thing. You better communicate first. Yeah. You better no. pray. <laughs> it also, I believe it also avoids it also avoids you thinking about another person because it's a sin. It's always a sin 
we have a we have our Nino, our grand. How do you call Nino? Godfather. Godfather. Our Godfather, a pastor who's oh, one of your one of his members came to him and he said and she said, Pastor, every time I make love with my husband, I think of you. And he rebuked that person on that spot. I rebuke you, sister. That's not that's not right. That's a sin, right? So it also avoids that think for you to think of another person. It, and it's not it's not right. You have to really focus on your spouse because that's the gift of God for you. You know, if we don't communicate with our spouse, the more we don't understand each other. That's very true. The deeper our conflicts become, and we draw away from each other and not communicate. So guys, if you want to understand your wife, let's communicate with them. Try to talk to her and really, you know, listen. You know, communication is a two-way two communication. You have not just to keep on talking and talking and talking, just pour out your heart. But at the same time, learn to listen. Maybe they, they have something to say. Especially a husband, we don't want to listen to them. But you know, it's so important to listen to our, to our spouse or our wife. No. They, they have some good insights, and they're very close to God. So they will say, okay, we better make this decision. So guys, learn to communicate. If you want to understand your wife, <laughs> better talk to her. Amen. Yes. Can you say amen for that? Amen. 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 A lot of advice to the women. Sometimes we're the ones always talking, right? So uh, let's uh, shut our mouth sometimes because they also have a lot to say. They also have a lot to say, and we have to listen to them. They're the head of the family. God designed them to be men. Right, Chris? You agree, Chris? <laughs> so we have to really listen. We cannot look at, look down on them. We have to Sometimes we women, we thought we know more than them. Right? But it's not true. Men are more focused. Men are more focused, and they are more... Uh, Single-minded. Our our minds our minds are very scattered. Right. In a, in a in a conversation, women can discuss thousands of topics, but with men, they only discuss one thing because they are they are focused. Don't forget our nothing box. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. I'd like to, uh, to to quote uh, to read this quotation. It says, "Communicating is not merely dialogue." Proper communication is not merely expressing your ideas. It is trying to understand as you strive to be understood. In fact, Richard Dixon, uh, the president, said, You cannot learn from one another until you stop shouting at one another and you speak quietly enough so that your words can be heard as well as your voices. That's right. Especially in husband and wife, sometimes if there's conflict, we try to uh, make our voice... What's the problem? I'm the boss here. You know, we try to uh, put fear in the hearts of our of our wife. It doesn't work for me. <laughs> I remember in the beginning years of our marriage, because uh, Pastor Noel was raised in a family from Samar, and they really talk loud. They're like fighting when they talk. So, and, but but with us, we, in our family, we're very soft spoken. We can really just uh, very, very, very soft. So, in our beginning of in the beginning of our years of marriage, he's talking to me very loudly, and I said, "Why are you shouting?" And he said, "I'm not shouting. That's, it's that's normal." normal. <laughs> but then, when he learned that uh, when he learned that it's shout for me, he he tried to like tone down, yeah, lower the the tone of her, of his voice, so... You know, he was excited to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when I'm excited. Yeah. <laughs> it gets a little louder. I know. And then listen to this one. Dr. Billy Graham, you know Dr. Billy Graham, a well-known evangelist, said, Hot heads and cold hearts never solve anything. Right. It should be cold heads and hot hearts. Yeah. You can never solve any problem when your voice is, you know... I, I, what we call this on the high tone of voice, you can never solve a problem. It should be cold heads and hot hearts. Amen? So, making sure you are in the kind of... 
situation. You have to have hot hearts, but cold, cold heads. Now, uh, especially in having a good communication, it's so important to have a, use words that edify. You know, it's so important to edify one another when we use the when we speak words. Always remember use words that would edify, especially your wife. Sometimes words hurt. It breaks, you know, the spirit. So we must be very careful on releasing the word because there's power in the word, especially when we are full of uh, we, 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 when we are uh, what we call this full of angry anger in our hearts, especially if there's a certain situation or prob prob probably problem that you're facing. Sometimes you try to uh, get mad with your wife. It's so important to be very careful on using words. Sometimes it hurts. Sometimes they will say, you better slap me instead of you uh, throwing that words to me. So words are very powerful. So we have to use words that would edify, that would uh, establish your relationship. Guys, it's so important. That's there why are three, you, go ahead. Sorry, but there are three diff most difficult words that we say. We can, we say. Most difficult words that we say. Number one is sorry. Right? So, uh, I love you. Yeah, I love you. <laughs> what else? <laughs> <laughs> How are you? How are you now? Sometimes we ask, sometimes we thought we know, or we, we assume, we just assume that it's okay. Never mind asking, right? But it's always should, it should always be in our mouth to say sorry, right? If you hurt, if you, if, if you have, if you're having a second thought that you've hurt your spouse, <coughs> Don't don't um, don't forget to say sorry, and then I love you. Say I love you always. You know, a, a while ago I said we pray. We pray before, right? We we pray before, right? And after, you know what we do? We 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 say uh, me. I say I always say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> 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 I always read. No, no, no. You know this this what they said a happy wife yeah. makes a happy life. Amen. And that's pretty true. Amen. Want to have a happy life? Make your wife a happy life. Amen. That's a secret. And allow God to build that kind of, you know. <laughs> so guys, you want your wife to be you want to have a happy life? Makes a happy wife. Can we say amen for that, especially the wife? Are you agree with me, guys? A wife? Yes. Say it. A wife. Yes. One wife. So, communication is so important. Establish a strong and healthy communication. Amen? So, learn to speak quietly now. Then say, express your heart, express your ideas, and listen to your wife. Then you will have a happy life. No, I think both sides now, both just sides. only for wife. Yeah. We have there. to respect our husband. Sometimes we just like, Ch -ch -ch -ch, but we didn't really recognize that our husband needs the respect and we need love. So That's both right. sides. That's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I agree. <laughs> and then the second one is, what about in the area of consideration? Are we considerate enough, especially to our weaker partner? You know what the scripture says in First Peter? Husbands, in the same way, be considerate as you live with your wives and treat them with respect as the weaker partner. You know, the wife, they are weaker partner. We are, what we call this, 50% strong when it comes to physical aspect. So they need our strength, they need our energy so that we could extend help to our weaker partner. It's so important. So, husbands should be considered wife because our wives are weaker partner. They need respect, care, and love. So in what area? The question is how? Husbands, I like to talk especially to the husbands. Help them in house chores. Amen? Amen. 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 <laughs> Say amen to that. Amen. It's so important. <laughs> no, Stephen did that now too. I said, I cannot take this anymore. You have and then, <laughs> learn how to praise your wife. Especially if they prepare something, let's say, they prepare some to school, say, oh, I appreciate your, uh, this wonderful, uh, this some to school. Thank, thank you. 
Just learn to appreciate. Those little things are important. Sometimes we neglect all those little things. But those are important. Appreciate your wife, especially taking care of the children. You know, I, one time my, my wife Linda, she was in uh, California. I was busy taking care of the children. I found out it's not easy to be mom and dad at the same time. And I said, wow, my wife is doing all this stuff, all these things. And I appreciate her so much. When she come back, I said, oh, I miss you. I need you here. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot handle all these things. I cannot handle our children. Just, just imagine uh, what, would, what would be the breakfast, a lunch, and dinner, and everything. I said, oh, I need my wife here. And then I said, thank you. You're a big help to me. Amen. For the wives, for the wives is this, okay? Wives, we must be considerate too. Number one, how? By respecting your husband as the head of the family. As I was saying a while ago, don't sabotage their authority, but learn to submit. Okay? Sabotage. <laughs> so sometimes, amen. So we allow our husband to decide. Even if we thought we thought it's not the right decision, let them decide. They will find out. They will find out what 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 should be done after. And then if it's if it's a wrong decision, don't blame them. I told you you should have done this because I don't never. They will learn from it. They will learn from it. Don't worry. That's rules. How many God, times? <laughs> God, God is so wise that He put the husband to be the head for for purpose, and then we should allow them to decide. You know, wives, if we don't let them decide, they will just let you decide on everything. Tono bahala, you take charge. They will just they will just okay. I'm not. I, you're not really following me. You're not submitting to me. You decide on your own. So the harder our lives will become, right? That's how it is. We put all the burdens on ourselves if we take the authority from them. And it's not a, the right functions of the family. Number two, <laughs> second, second is support them in their goals. Support them in their goals and ambitions in life. Support me. Support Right, listening. <laughs> so for, with, for me, for my life, I have committed myself to really support Pastor Noel for whatever, for, for whatever God has called him. Our focus should, wives, our focus should only be on our spouse. Yeah. How we can put them on the on the pedestal. How we how we can. How yeah. God's will be fulfilled in their lives. Not on telenovela. <laughs> <laughs> so, did he say even if there's a language barrier? Yeah. 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 <laughs> and be thankful. Be thankful to your husband's determination. Be grateful. Always acknowledge them. Thank you for doing this. Thank you for working for me, for our family. So be considerate. Twice. Okay, so let's be, be considerate. No? And then the last one is uh, what we call this commitment. You know what the Bible says in Matthew 19, 6 says, But God has joined together, let no man put asunder. It's so important. Commitment is so important. What keeps you, what keeps you growing your relationship, keeps you going, it's your commitment. It's so important to be committed to one another, especially husband and wife, it's so important. You know, nowadays, more than 50% of marriages end up in divorce. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they forget their words of commitment. You know, love sometimes, it's just a feeling, sometimes it will vanish. Mm -hmm. When you see a woman, probably a beautiful woman, rather than compared to your wife, a sexy wife, and then you find, you find oh, your, your, your emotion, it, it changes. You know? But what keeps you... In your relationship, it's your commitment. You're committed to him. You're committed to one another. Amen. Through thick and thin. In fact, remember, you made, you made a covenant before God in front of a lot of witnesses in love for richer and for poor, in sickness or in health. You remember that commitment you made in front of a lot of witnesses, in front of, of God? That's our commitment to God. 
Only death can separate us. Only death. D E A T H. Not D E V T. Not death. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Because our feelings will change, but what makes us stand still in a relationship is our commitment to one another. Are you committed to one another as husband and wife? May I ask the husband and wife, are you still committed to one another until now? Amen. Are you still committed to your wife? Are you still willing to, to love her? Accept her as she is? Remember? When you, when, you, when you caught her? Remember? She was so sexy and now, imagine, she's still sexy. <laughs> So what we'll do, what we will do now is to allow, uh, ask everyone, every one of us to come here, bring your spouse here in the middle. <coughs> may, I, may I request everyone to please stand up? So let's, let's, uh, let's go to the middle and spend time with your wife. Okay. Uh, kindly take 